T-minus one minute. T-minus fifty seconds. T-minus forty seconds. T minus thirty seconds. T minus twenty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. It's me again everyone, Jesus Bulalacao Rances, your host for today's webinar. Thank you for taking time to attend in this virtual in-service training for the teaching and non-teaching staff of Bao National High School. So without so much ado, may I request your fellow teachers to please stand as we begin this program by giving honor to our country as we sing the Philippine National Anthem. Let us invoke and feel the presence of the Almighty Father through this prayer led by Ma Mary Jane Bolivar. In the name of the, of the Father, of the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord Almighty God, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for this given opportunity to continue to live, to love, and to serve amidst this cataclysmic COVID-19. May you give us the guidance and wisdom to successfully administrate this webinar that we may come up with a fulfilling direction to continue to educate. We ask this through the help of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. This time, let us listen to the recapitulation to be given to us by Mom Evelyn Cortez. Let's give her a big round of applause, please. Good morning, everyone. Today is the third day of our school's virtual visit. Before we continue to our next set of discussions, let's have a recall of the topics discussed on the second day. On the second day of our virtual inset, we'll learn from our versatile and empowering master teachers from English and TLE department, Mom Gina Butor and Sir Michael Angelo Aguilar. 
Mom Gina Butor discussed about the various roles of online teachers. She also enumerated the roles of online teachers in this pandemic world and pressed the importance of online teachers in the new normal. After that, Sir Michael Angelo Aguila tackled about online assessment. On his discussion, he talked about the advantages and disadvantages of online assessment as well as the description of online learning education. He also explained the characteristics, challenges, issues, and purposes of assessment of learning and informants with the five key strategies and assessment practices in the online learning. And that's it! Have a fruitful day everyone! Thank you so much Mom Evelyn! Next in line is the thought of the day to be given to us by Sir Geran Casimero. Friends, please put your hands together for Sir Geran. Good morning everyone! Our thought of the day Kindness in words creates confidence. Kindness in thinking creates profoundness. Kindness in giving creates love. Thank you, Sir Jaran. Moving right along is the energizer through a video presentation. Teachers, please participate. Here are seven simple exercises to treat radial nerve palsy that you can do at home. The water spout. Hold your arm out straight from your body, parallel to the floor. Then hold an empty cup in the outstretched hand and turn it upside down as if pouring water. Figure eight. Stand leaning forward with your unaffected hand on a worktop or back of chair for support. Swing your affected arm in a figure eight. When your hand comes closest to your body, face your palm outward. When your hand is furthest from your body, face your palm inward. Hide and seek. Hold elbow out away from your side. Hold arm at a 90 degree angle with your palm facing up. Rotate your forearm behind your elbow while keeping your elbow in place. Your palm should end up facing the ceiling again, but this time behind your elbow. Turn your head to look at your fingers. Don't forget to tip. Look towards the affected side. Take your hand behind your back as if to accept a backhanded tip. Move fingers up and down. The water pump. Hold hands in a twisted position as shown. Bring hands up and down in a pumping motion. Table stretch. Keep the back of your hand flat on the table and rotate your whole body away. Self-massage. Massage your back in a circular motion. Depending on the side affected, the right hand should circle counterclockwise with the left hand circling clockwise. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at support at braceability.com or call us at 866-712-7808. If you would like to see similar videos in the future, please subscribe to our channel. Also, click here to watch more videos. Thank you, fellow teachers, for your usual cooperation. And now, to give us the do's and don'ts in this virtual in-service training, let us welcome Mam Lizel Ignore Nugit. Good morning. Here's a few reminders for our third day of webinar. First, have with you a notebook and pen ready for taking down notes. Second, pay attention to the resource speaker. Third, focus on topics being discussed. If you have questions, Write your questions first and send it later on the comment section. And lastly, I also want to remind you that today, you are in official attendance to this virtual event. So please wear your red and gray school shirt even at home. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mam Lizelle. To introduce the resource speaker for the topic General Specifications of ADM Learning Resources, let us all welcome the Head Teacher 3 of the Mathematics Department, Ma'am Juliet B. Botor. Friends, please give Ma'am Juliet a big round of applause, please. Hello everyone! It is my pleasure to introduce to you a fashionista, a Master Teacher 1 in Filipino, graduated MA at Partido College 
with 37 years experience in DepEd. Friends, Mrs. Ruth B. Butor to discuss about learning resources. Sa ating napakasiglang ulang guro ng Baaw National High School, Dr. Lilibel Pajardo Urante, Ginang Vita Bulalin ng Senior High School, Mga Ulong Guro ng Bao High School, Kaguruan, Mga ICT ng webinar na ito. Isang mapagpalang araw sa lahat. My topic is general specification of alternative delivery mode or the ADM and the learning resources. But before we proceed to my topic, may I give you this aim. At the end of the session, the participant will be able to be creative and resourceful, malikhain at maparaan. Acceptance to our learning of new normal, bukas ang kaisipan sa pagbabago. At ang pinakahuli, cope up with this new trend of learning, makaagapay sa pagbabago. In choosing the best alternative delivery, let us find innovative ways to get a better value. Your own design and a step-by-step -step guide to progress. That is the syllabus in alternative delivery. Now that we are in the new normal, we follow some alternative changes from our delivery method in teaching. Our traditional project is being structured. According to our USEC, Dad San Antonio, the most essential learning competency or the milk be used. Learning competency be suitable, available, and accessible to this new normal. So, we must not forget the, the two syllables in alternative delivery. The innovative ways and the step-by-step -step guide to progress. So, as a teacher, let us be kind to ourselves and compassionate to our students. What are the learning resources and how can we improve the performance? Learning is the process of bringing changes in behavior of the learner through experience. It is the result in the acquisition of knowledge, skills, interest, attitude, etc. May I show to you this learning pyramid? From this learning, we have lecture, we have reading, the audiovisual, the demonstration, the discussion, the practice, doing, the and then teach others. We will notice that from this learning pyramid, the great retention rate is from the group of teach others. From the lecture, we don't have a retention rate. From reading, we have 10%. From audiovisual, the 20%, demonstration, that is 30%, and discussion, we have 50%, and the practice doing is 
75%, and the last is 90% that teach others. We experienced this already during our face-to-face -face lesson. When the students are in group activity, they are dealing with each other. They are exchanging ideas. So because of that situation, or because of that experience of our students, of big learning, they have a big retention rate from the teach others. That is 90%. But we will do away with that because we are in the new normal. But this learning will be achieved. The lecture, the reading, the audiovisual, the demonstration, the discussion, the practice. According to Raul Kawachi from the webinar I attended, learning resources are those device procedures that help the teaching more interesting, more stimulating, more reinforcing, and more effective. A resource is a source from which benefits is produced. It is acquired to accomplish activity or to achieve desired outcome. May I show to you this slide, a resource slide. This is a group of students who are in the already with their activity from the resource they use. Learning resources are those devices and procedures that help make teaching and learning more interesting more stimulating, more reinforcing, and more effective. From the learning resources, the student can play, can learn, and can grow together. To improve our performance, there must be an availability of LTM. What do you mean by LTM? That is learning, teaching materials. As a teacher, that is our weapon, the learning teaching materials. Teachers must be well-trained, motivated, prepared, and supervised. In our teaching, motivation is important. When we use motivation, naturally, our student will be interested from our lesson. So let's not forget this one. One of the learning resources in learning is uh, the learning materials. Learning teaching materials must be educational. Why? It enhances the quality of learning and improve student performance. An example for these learning materials is the textbook. Textbook is the most visible aspect of curriculum and often considered the main script that shaped the teaching learning. Just last time, when we had our last session in Filipino, an example of learning resources we had are the following. The accordion book, the wordless picture, the finger puppet, and the origami. May I show to you the slide of this? What is an accordion book? Accordion book can be used by our uh, math teachers, or our communication arts teachers. This is made of folded cardboards, wherein you can write stories, a series of stories, which the student can rearrange. Next is the wordless picture. This is another textbook, wherein you can see illustration, a drawings, which the student can make their own story out of the drawings they see. Next is the finger 
puppet. The finger puppet uh, maybe can be used by our Mappy teachers. They can, out of this uh, puppet, they can dance with the accompaniment of music. So by that uh, finger puppet, the student can identify the song they are going to play. Next is the origami. All the teachers can use this one. This is a paper folding which you can write your questions from the spaces provided, or the, the student can also write their answer from this origami. So these are the example of books which you can have it during your lesson. You can see these examples of learning resources in our department in reality. Learning resources should be simple enough so that a student can understand and enhance his learning. That is the principle of simplicity. May I show to you the slide? There are pictures here, the banana, the watermelon, the french fries, and the spaghetti. Anywhere you go, you can see this in reality. They are just so simple. So remember, when we are choosing our learning resources, See to it that we are going to have the simple one so that our student can easily understand and enhance his learning. Another learning resources is the software. Learning at home with YouTube. YouTube, this is very popular to our kids. As the school around, will close their buildings and families find themselves at home. We want to ensure the learning together continues while this pandemic time. So we were partnering the learning creators to bring parents and families resources and activities. These resources are not meant to replace homework assigned by the teachers, but mean to complement that work. So this pandemic time, our students are always having their gadgets. The parents, their families are intact. It doesn't mean that they are going to replace their assignment by another activities they are going to have. From YouTube, the student can have their sports, which they like. They can research a menu, which they, which they like to eat. They can hear some news. So from these resources, let us always welcome them to learn with us. Teaching guide is another teaching resources. It supports teachers in their teaching practices. Effective teachers guide should contain explicit communication of conceptual approach which link to the proposed activities. It provides knowledge, support to help understand and implement the teaching plans. In teacher's guide, this is our plan. In teaching practices, just to have a smooth learning. Another teaching resources are the videos, 
or the movies, the news items from the radio, and the TV. From television and from the radio, it can be a teacher for our students. Why? It can reinforce listening, speaking skills, writing, and literary training. It can identify critical community problem and can hear counseling problem. So let us consider these learning resources, the principle of size. It should be prepared considering the size of the class. It should be served as a whole class or it should be not too small or not too big, but maybe we'll not consider this learning resource because we are in a uh, new normal. It depends upon to the number of our in their family. We will consider not the size, but the volume. Maybe if they are using uh, radio or the television at their residence, if it is only a too small family, maybe they can have a soft volume. They are going to use the volume of their TV or the radio just so because that is the principle of the volume, not the size. Because the size it is during our face-to-face -face, uh, lesson. Uh, let us not forget the principles, especially that we are in our own residence. May I end my topic with this question, which I researched from the Facebook. What matters to you? Sabi ng magulang, nagkaroon kami ng problem in terms of waking up. So early in the morning, ubos yung time. Pagod yung anak namin. Pag uwi, late na. Because of homeschooling ngayon, aayos ang buhay namin. Matuto kami sa, sa parenting. Thank you very much. This time, to introduce the resource speaker to discuss the topic Depth at Learning Delivery Modalities for School Year 2020-2021, let us welcome again the Head Teacher 3 of the Mathematics Department, Ma'am Juliet B. Bodor. My friends, allow me to introduce the very energetic Mrs. Laarni S. Ofresio, a Master Teacher in Araling Panlipunan. MA graduate of Partido College, she had 21 years of experience in the service. She will talk about learning delivery modes of DepEd. Good morning. I am Mrs. Marcia Laarne of Russia, Master Teacher 1 of the Aralin Salipunan Department. Today, we are faced with a universal problem the COVID-19 pandemic. The Department of Education deemed it necessary to give and deliver to our students the best education they can get despite the pandemic. This morning, I am going to talk on the DepEd learning modalities for school year 2020 and 2021. School opening will not necessarily mean traditional face-to-face -face learning in the classroom. The physical opening will depend on the risk severity grading and classification of a certain community pursuant to the guidelines from the Department of Health, the Interagency Task Force 
for management of emerging infectious diseases in the Philippines and the Office of the President. Traditional face-to-face -face learning. This referred to a learning delivery modality where the students and the teachers are both physically present in the classroom. And there are opportunities for active engagement, immediate feedback, and socio-emotional development of learners. This modality is the one we are using the previous years. In areas under the moderate and high-risk severity grading, this is not possible. However, there are learners with disability whose conditions require face-to-face -face instruction. But this will be subject to further discussions within DepEd, with partners, and with parents. Ibig sabihin, kung mga may mga estudyante na kailangan talaga ang harapang pagkatuto, kinakailangan ng mga masusing paggabay ng mga guro, pwede rin na pumunta ang mga guro sa kanilang tahanan. Pero, ito ay pag-uusapan muna ng departamento, ng mga magulang, at ng iba pang kinauukulang tao bago ito ipatupad. Face-to-face -face option may also be feasible in very low-risk areas, such as the geographically isolated, disadvantaged, and conflict-affected areas with no history of infections and very low and easily monitored external contacts, but with teachers and learners living within the vicinity of the school. Any face-to-face -face learning delivery must have proper risk assessment and must adhere to the health protocols in place. Potential learning spaces in the community near the school may be explored to add spaces for the conduct of classes with the appropriate social distancing. So, ibig sabihin, kung talagang kinakailangan ang face-to-face -face delivery, kinakailangan muna itong i-assess na mabuti at kinakailangan sumunod sa health protocol sa lugar. What are the types, modality, approach, and strategies in the face-to-face -face learning. We have the modified shifting of classes or the MSC. In the shifting of classes, teaching is directly focused on concepts with corresponding activities. Supplemental activities and assessment shall be done, brought by the learners when shifted at home. So, ano ang ibig sabihin nito? Yung instruction ibibigay harapan sa mga estudyante. Pero yung mga gawain at mga pagsusulit, ginagawa sa bahay. Ibig sabihin, maaaring magbigay lang tayo ng mga schedule kung kailan lang ang mga bata pupunta sa isang disignadong lugar para ang guro ay magbigay ng mga instruction sa kung paano nila gagawin yung mga lesson na kailangan nilang gawin sa loob ng kanilang mga tahanan. Yung mga gawain, gagawin sa bahay sa tulong ng mga magulang. Pagkatapos nila itong gawin, ibabalik nila ito sa mga guro para mawasto at mamarkahan ng mga guro. The shifting depends on how many days the competencies could be covered based on the competency code and the number of competencies to be covered in all learning areas. So halimbawa, ang isang aralin ay kinakailangan ng sampung araw na pagtuturo. So yung araw na yon kinakailangan matapos ng mga mag-aaral yung aralin na yon. So isang araw ang ibibigay ng guro para ibigay yung mga panuto kung paano gagawin ang learning competency na yon. Yung mga kailangan gawain o gawain ng mga mag-aaral ay gagawin nila sa kanilang mga tahanan sa tulong ng mga magulang at kung hindi talaga kinakailangan 
uh, hindi talaga kayang sagutan ng mga estudyante kahit na sila ay tinutulungan na ng kanilang mga magulang, ang mga guro ay pwedeng pumunta sa bahay nila at i-reinforce yung estudyante para magawa ang kanilang mga gawain. Shifting of classes with dyadic teaching or the SCDT. In this scheme, there would be two teachers inside the class per learning area. The number of learners they would handle should be the total number of learners they would handle in the normal days. During the dyadic le teaching, learners have to go through a series of individual activities after teaching the learning competencies to be facilitated, monitored by the two teachers. Ano ang ibig sabihin nito? Halimbawa, sa isang learning area, say, Araling Panlipunan, may dalawang guro na maghahandle ng subject na yan. Pero ang bilang ng mag-aaral ay depende doon sa bilang ng kung ilang section ang hawak nila. Halimbawa, meron silang limang section. Doon sa limang section na yon, yung mga mag-aaral na yon ang hahawak o ang magtuturo ay dalawang guro. Pero, bibigyan sila ng isahang gawain na ituturo para makumply yung mga learning competencies na ipapacilitate at imomonitor ng dalawang team teachers o ng dalawang guro na naka-assign para sa learning area na yon. Another approach is the ESM Focus Teaching for Junior High School. In this approach, only English, Science, and Mathematics shall be taught in school. Other learning areas shall be using the modular home-based approach. So, ibig sabihin, yung tatlong core subject lang, English, Science, and Math, ang ituturo sa loob ng ispilahan. Yung ibang learning areas like Filipino, Araling Panlipunan, TLE, MAPE, and Edukasyon sa Pagpapakatao, ang gagamitin nila ay yung modular, uh, modular approach at home-based approach. So, kinakailangan lang silang bigyan ng modules, dadalhin nila sa bahay, doon nila yung pag-aaralan, tapos ibabalik nila sa eskwilahan para iwasto, para mamarkahan ng mga guru. Another approach in the face-to-face -face learning is the RESM focus teaching, but this is good for elementary. In this approach, only reading, English, science, and mathematics shall be taught in school. Other learning areas shall be using the modular home-based school. Kagaya ito nung sa junior high school na yung tatlong core subject lang yung ituturo. Pero itong approach na ito is intended for elementary level. Another approach is the core specialized focus teaching for senior high school. In this approach, only the core and specialized subject shall be taught in school. Applied subject shall be using the home-based life skill and modular approach. So, makikita naman natin dito sa traditional face-to-face -face learning, bawat level, yung elementary, yung junior high school, yung senior high school, ay masusing pinag-aralan kung ano talaga ang akma para sa madali pero malalim na pagkatuto ng bawat mag-aaral, ng bawat Pilipinong mag-aaral. We come now to the distance learning. This referred to a learning delivery modality where learning takes place between the teachers and the learners who are geographically remote from each other during instruction. This modality has three types. The Modular Distance Learning, the MDL, 
online distance learning, the ODL, and the radio TV-based instruction. What are the types, modality, approach, and strategies in the distance learning? We have number one, the modular distance learning. This involves individualized instructions that allows learners to use self-learning modules in print or digital format or electronic copy, whichever is applicable in the context of the learner and other learning resources like the learner's materials, textbook, activity sheets, study guides, and other study materials. Learners access electronic copy of learning materials on a computer, tablet, personal computer, or smartphone. Dito sa pamamaraan na ito, walang harapang pagtuturo sa pagitan ng guro at mag-aaral. Ang pagkatuto ng mga estudyante ay sa pamamagitan ng print or digital format lamang. Kung saan ang mga mag-aaral ay maaaring makakuha ng kaalaman gamit ang makabagong pamamaraan ng teknolohiya sa pamamagitan ng print or digital format. Gamit ang mga learning materials, ang mga textbook, ang mga activity sheets na maaari nilang i-access sa computer, sa tablet, sa smartphone o sa kanilang mga personal computers. In this Distance learning, the teacher takes responsibility of monitoring the progress of the students. The learners may ask assistance from the teacher via email, text message, telephone, or instant messaging. Where possible, the teacher shall do home visits to learners needing remediation assistance. Any member of the family or other stakeholder in the community needs to serve as para teacher. So, ibig sabihin, dito sa distance learning, ang mga guro ay kinakailangang i-monitor ang progress ng mga mag-aaral. Kung halimbawa, may mga hindi naiintindihan ang mga mag-aaral sa kanilang mga gawain, Maaari nilang i-text, i-email ang mga guro para mabigyan sila ng kaukulang tulong o remediation. Ang guro ay pwedeng pumunta at mag-home visit sa kanilang mga estudyante na nangangailangan ng remediation. Pwede rin na kung sinong kasama nila sa bahay o miyembro ng pamilya ang tumulong sa kanila o kahit na sinong member ng stakeholder ang pwedeng tumulong sa mag-aaral para matulungan siya sa kanyang mga gawain. Another approach is the online distance learning. This features the teacher as facilitator Engaging learners' active participation through the use of various technologies, access through internet while they are geographically remote from each other during instruction. The internet is used to facilitate learner, teacher, and peer-to-peer -peer communication. Online learning allows live synchronous instruction. Ano ang ibig sabihin nito? teacher, dito sa online distance learning, ang teacher ang facilitator. Gamit ang aktibong partisipasyon na gumagamit ng makabagong teknolohiya sa internet. Na hindi sila harapang nagkikita ng mga estudyante sa panahon ng instruction. Ang internet ang ginagamit para mapadali ang learner-teacher or ang peer-to-peer -peer communication. Online learning allows live synchronous instruction. Ano ang ibig sabihin? Kinakailangan 
ang pagtuturo o ang pagkatuto ay gumagamit ng makabagong teknolohiya gaya ng internet. Walang harapang pagtuturo sa pagitan ng guro at ng mag-aaral. Dito sa approach na ito, kinakailangan ang mabilis at malakas na internet signal. Dahil may nakalaan na oras lamang para sa pagtalakay ng mga aralin dito sa online distance learning na ito. Natalakay na yung synchronous at asynchronous approach, dito natin mas maiintindihan kung ano yung kinakailangan at kung ano yung mga tinatawag na pamantayan sa online distance learning. What are the suggested platforms, resources, and mechanisms using the online distance learning? The use of virtual classrooms like the Google Classroom, the Edmodo, Escology, the use of web-enhanced learning activities, the free access to open educational resources, the access to learning resources portals, and the access to Deaf and Common are very important in the online distance learning today. Another delivery mode is the blended learning. This refers to a learning delivery that combines face-to-face -face with any or mix of online distance learning, modular distance learning, and TV or radio-based instruction. Blended learning will enable the school to limit face-to-face -face learning, ensure social distancing, and decrease the volume of people outside the home at any given time. Critical for the implementation will be the production of the needed teachers and learners learning materials, as well as the support of the media institution like TV and radio stations. Sa blended learning, nababawasan ang harapang pagkatuto sa pagitan ng guro at ng mga mag-aaral. Nasisiguro ang social distancing at nababawasan ang dami ng mga tao o ng mga mag-aaral na nasa labas ng kanilang mga tahanan. Meron lang ilang suliranin na maaaring kaharapin sa pagpapatupad ng blended learning. Isa na dito ay ang pagsasagawa ng mga learning modalities. What are the suggested platforms, resources, mechanism in the blended learning? We have the use of print and non-print learning materials but not limited to the following modules, worksheets, activity sheets, the use of gadgets for kinder to grade 3 SPED learners. Another delivery mode is the homeschooling. This is an alternative delivery mode that aims to provide learners with access to quality basic education through a home-based environment to be facilitated by qualified parents, guardian, or tutors who have undergone relevant trainings. It allows families to educate according to their personal faith, philosophy, and values, and to adjust learning schedules around family schedules and circumstances. However, there remain several issues in its implementation, including the supervision of licensed teachers and alignments with the curriculum. Thus, this modality will be subject to a later depth and issuance before its expansion. Etong delivery mode na ito ay naglalayon ng mabigyan ng dekalidad na edukasyon ang mga mag-aaral sa loob ng kanilang mga tahanan na ipapatupad ng mga magulang na dumaan sa masusing pagsasanay. Isa sa kabutihan ng 
delivery mode na ito, ay masasanay o matuturuan ang mga estudyante batay sa sariling paniniwala at pag-uugali ng mga magulang. Ang oras ay maaari ding iakma sa mga oras kung saan magtutugma ang oras ng mag-aaral at ng mga magulang. Pero dito sa uri ng delivery mode na ito, kinakailangan ang mga magulang ay dumaan sa masusing pag-aaral o pagsasanay. Pero kapag ang mga magulang ay walang akma o masusing pagsasanay, ang mga bata ay hindi pwedeng gumamit ng homeschooling. What are the suggested platforms, resources, mechanisms in the homeschooling? We have the use of the print materials, learning resources like modules, worksheets, activity sheets, and others. We also have the use of the digital packets or the learning materials. That ends my discussion on the different delivery modalities for school year 2020 and 2021. Sulong Edukalidad. Together, we heal as one. Thank you. Again, to introduce the resource speaker for the topic, Quality Assurance, let us welcome the Head Teacher 3 of the Mathematics Department, Ma'am Juliet B. Botor. Our next speaker is one of the gorgeous teachers of Baal National High School, a master teacher in values education. She graduated BS in Nursing at USAM with methods of teaching at UNEP, MA graduate of Partido College. Let us welcome Mrs. Catherine P. Yu to discuss about quality assurance. Good day, fellow educators. I am Mrs. Catherine P. Yu, MP1 of Education sa Pagpapakataong Department of Baao National High School. Welcome to this webinar entitled Quality Assurance Evaluation of Learning Resources. Before we start, kumusta po ka mo? Paano ta po masasabi na agko quality o kalidad aka na tong pagtuturo mo na klase yan? Nagre-ready na raw po kita o ready na kita? Quality first. Do it right the first time. Why? Is it because the first step will give us the direction towards our goal? Doing quality preparation and planning rightly will give also a quality result. Quality is not a theory for teachers, but a lifestyle. In the face of this new normal brought about by this pandemic or COVID-19 pandemic, and the advent of Education 4.0, quality education is indeed a challenge, but it is not impossible to continue the tradition of quality education in the Department of Education through commitment and collaboration. The rationale of this webinar is intended to provide the basic information and instructions relating to criteria-based ev evaluation of resources. The enabling objectives are to explain why having specifications and standards are essential to doing an evaluation of learning teaching resources. It will give us a a brief description of the process and procedure of evaluating teacher develop learning resources at the school level. Why quality assurance? 
it allows for self-planning, assessment, and monitoring of performance by way of a set of national standards and international benchmarks. Quality assessment provides for a realistic and effective process of accountability. Since as classroom teachers, we are also curricularists in our own right. We are the one implementing the curriculum and at times designing it to suit the needs of the learners. Therefore, we also take full responsibility of the learning process of the learners that we teach. What do we mean when we say quality? Quality means excellence, optimum level. It is effective, demand-driven, and accessible. It should be efficient and to doability, operability, and it should be affordable. How are we going to ensure quality? Let us take note if the term main quality objective, the most important goal that we must realize. Who are the different key players for the position or for that purpose? In this, it is also vital to know the different strategies that are tested to work efficiently and effectively. Or we could have an innovation depending upon the situation and the needs of the learners. Measuring the success of the quality objective is essential. So we must design for us to know if it works or not, if it is effective or not. Do we hit the target or not? Learning resource management development system, assessment, and evaluation system. For example, in education sa pagpapakatao, are we going to use the existing module given by the DepEd? Or are we going to make our own since we have no face-to-face -face contact with the students, here comes the redevelopment of the module. So, can be printed and given to the learners in their homes or online learning. System just like the Google Classroom can be used in the radio, television, even the social media just to continue the education of the Filipino students without taking for granted the quality of education that they deserve. The learning resources developed by teachers should also be evaluated to ensure the quality and suitability of the content and the process that ensures localization and contextualization that is up for the limitations of the different learners during this pandemic. Quality assurance can be defined as part of quality management focused on providing confidence that quality requirements will be fulfilled. The confidence provided by quality assessment, quality or quality assurance is twofold. We have internally management. We have externally the customers, the government agencies, the regulators, the certifiers, and third parties or other stakeholders. An alternate definition is all the planned and systemic activities implemented within the quality 
system that can be demonstrated to provide confidence that a product or service will fulfill requirement for quality. Quality control can be defined also as part of quality management focused on fulfilling quality requirements. While quality assurance relates to how a process is performed or how a product is made, quality control is more on the inspection aspect of quality management. An alternate definition is it should the operational techniques and activities used to fulfill requirements for quality. So we have the saying, when quality goes up, goes up, headaches go down. That changes everything. Or it's or else it's the other way around. If quality is not insured, headaches will go up and everything will collapse. So quality must be insured at all times. Learning resource management development system quality assurance framework describes the parameters to ensure that all teaching, development, learners, resources, and professional development resources that are cataloged and accessed or located via the LRMDS or the Learning Resource Management Development System portal are of high, high educational and technical quality. Teacher developed learning resource is a must that we must utilize the various learning resources found in the LRMDS website of DepEd. And we are encouraged to make our own learning resources that can also be utilized by all teachers in our country. So it's paved the way for linkages and an avenue for enough learning resources that can be available if we are going to work together for a quality learning process. And it starts with our learning resources. LRMDS Quality Assurance Framework describes the processes that ensure learning, teaching, and profession development resources. It should be re relevant to the needs and expectations of the users. It is appropriate to the current needs of the learners, our students, and teachers, meaning it is timely. It should also be accessible by the range of technology available to the users and it can be used by limited technological materials and it should be usable and functional to all. Another, it should also be used with great ease and purpose. It is executable, meaning it can be used by its simplest form. The LRM, LRMD's Quality Assurance Framework has been developed to assist managers to manage, maintain, and continuously improve access to quality resources. Uh, it should be clearly documented and 
transparent. The process is transparent. It should have well-defined standards, specifications, and evaluation criteria. Then, it well-trained personnel, capacity of the LRMDS2 system to respond to the user's need. It should be of high quality products and services. In LRMDS here in Camarines Sur, when we say books, modules, and other learning resources given by the DepEd, are they authored by well-trained teachers, writers? Do the products and services are in accordance with the quality standards? And most of all, does the LRMD is responsive to the needs of the clients? The main principles underlying the LRMDS quality assurance processes are it should be user-centered, meaning there is an active and integrated involvement of LRMDS users at all levels, in the school, in the division, and in the and region. It should also be responsive. LRMDS products and services deliver is informed by user requirements and feedback for its LRMDS subsystems. LRMDS employs the use of most appropriate media content talking into account the profiles of schools, teachers, and learners, and access to technologies. It should be standard-based, meaning LRMDS inputs, processes, and outputs conform to agreed quality standards and specifications. So, what is the purpose of evaluation? Uh, the purpose is to select resources to be cataloged in the LRMDS portal. It should be uploaded to the portal and cataloged. And it should be evaluated at the school level. So, we have the types of resources. We have the print, the digital print, online websites, video-based, and interactive resources. We have a lot of different educational resources. What we need is to maximize the use of these materials. We need to capacitate ourselves, ourselves, for us to share this with our learners. In LRMDS, the instruments will be used in various streams of evaluation, namely, a mode evaluation of existing resources in existing format for reproduction and cataloging, digital or non-digital. Evaluation of existing resources for redevelopment. Is it digital again and non-digital? All resource evaluations should commence with the IPR review, the in individual performance review. When many resources 
belonging to a series are to be evaluated, then the individual performance rating can be completed once and for all. Any DepEd owned and copyright resources for which content errors, accuracy issues, and editorial issues or layout issues are identified and can be fixed and revised and then uploaded. If the IPR allows the requirement to revise and correct the issues would form part of evaluation recommendation. So be prepared to make a specific recommendation at the end of your evaluation. As you apply the instruments to specific resources, you should note, note all criteria and instructions which were problematic. So here are the specifications. So, educational should be curriculum based, sub subject matter, the skills and processes, age and stage of schooling, cultural inclusivity. So should be accessibility, physical and intellectual ability. Oh, technical, the format, the file size, the authoring, software, user plugins, the players, or the software interoperability. Intellectual property and rights of the author, management contributors, access and distribution use. So we have the storage distribution and version control for management and uh, maintenance access. Publication and file use. We have the different types of formats for reproduction. So no learning resources, teaching resources, program development management, resource is likely to encompass all quality principles in its, in, in its own right. As many of these are realized in the relationships between the teacher, the learner, resource, and the learning environment. Usually, the principles and associated criteria will consist of quantitative and qualitative elements. Thus, a concept of reasonableness on balance. Balance is used of application of the criteria and applied. So let me end by this webinar by the quotation of John Ruskin. Quality is never an accident. It is always the result of intelligent effort. Thank you. So we learn, we teach, and we heal as one. Thank you. Thanks to you, Ma'am Catherine P. U. for discussing the topic, Quality Assurance. Fellow teachers, let's give Ma'am Cathy a virtual clap. The Bao National High School teachers are with much appreciation to you, Ma'am Marcia Laarne Opresho, for discussing the topic, DepEd Learning Delivery Modalities for School Year 2020 to 2021. That's all for now. Big thanks, everyone. It was a pleasure being with you in this third day of the virtual in-service training for the teaching and non-teaching staff of Bao National High School. See you soon!